Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and in this video I'll be showing you what I have installed on my MacBook Air running macOS 10.12 Sierra. This is the Gold Master Candidate 1 that was released about three weeks ago I think and I know that there is a GM2 which is the same as the public retail release but I haven't had enough issues in GM1 to actually go through and install the GM2 or public update. So here is the About This Mac window. Of course, it's running Mac OS 10.12 on my 13-inch mid-2012 MacBook Air, which runs a Intel Core i5 CPU clocked at 1.8 gigahertz, 4 gigs of DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM, and of course, we do have a 128 gig SSD. For displays, I'm just using the internal display, of course. The resolution is actually set to 1920 by 1080 instead of 1440 by 900, and that's using a system preferences pane called Switch Res X, which lets you scale up the resolution, even for internal laptop displays, so I can go all the way up to 2560 by 1600 if I wanted to. So let's close out of that and go to the storage tab. So the 128 gig SSD is split up into two partitions. So we do have, of course, the OS 10 partition. And then I do have Windows 10 installed via bootcamp. So that's an NTFS partition. Then we do have a support tab and a service tab. As you can see on my desktop, it's incredibly clean. I'm just using the standard Mac OS Sierra wallpaper. I have two icons on my desktop for quick access to my Mac OS partition as well as my Windows 10 partition. In my dock, I have Finder, Calendar, Firefox, Tweetbot, Skype, Spotify, Steam, Messages, My SMS, TeamViewer, System Preferences, and QuickTime because that's open. But everything to the left of QuickTime are always there in the dock. Now going through each one of the items in my dock, of course we have Calendar, that's kind of self-explanatory I think. Firefox is my preferred web browser and I do use the Firefox app on Android. I don't really use Chrome because I'm not really into Google that much, so that's why I use Firefox. Tweetbot is my preferred Twitter client for Mac OS. It's not free. It's a little bit pricey. I think it's 10 bucks, maybe a little bit more, but it has quite a few features and it looks and works very well. Next up is Skype. goes without saying. Spotify is my preferred music streaming service, mainly because it supports pretty much every platform out there, Windows Phone, Mac OS, Windows, and just so many others. And I do like how it supports crossfading between tracks when you're actually listening to the audio, which even Apple Music does not do unless you use iTunes. The iOS and Android apps for Apple Music do not support crossfading, which is really odd to me. Next up is Steam, which I rarely open on my MacBook Air. I could probably actually remove the dock icon, but just in case, I'll just leave it there, I guess. Messages, since I don't use iMessage anymore, since I don't use the iPhone anymore, there are only a few people who I contact who actually use iMessage, so that's what I use it here for. Um, I don't really check it too often. Next up is My SMS, which allows me to send and receive text messages from my Android device from pretty much anywhere. There's also a web interface that's really easy to use that allows you to access the same content from any computer that has internet access. So that's kind of nice, and it's definitely a little bit more accessible compared to Apple's iMessage. Next up is TeamViewer. There's, there's always a static icon in the dock for when you have TeamViewer open as a background task. And then I guess on that note, in my taskbar, I have the QuickTime icon. That's not usually there. It's only there because I'm using this for a screen recording. Then I also have Yandex Disk, which I actually use as an alternative to things like OneDrive, Dropbox, and Google Drive. It's only 20 bucks a year for 100 gigs of space. And it works pretty much exactly like the three services that, that I just mentioned. So file syncing across any device that has the app installed and it just works really well and it's extremely affordable. It, I think it's the cheapest 100 gig option out there. Then of course we have TeamViewer and then we have iSnap and this allows you to snap windows to certain halves of the screen. So if, if I wanted to snap this window to the left half, I can just use option left arrow. If I wanna snap it to the right half, let me open a new window. I could do option right arrow. Then if I wanted to maximize this window, I can just do option up arrow. It does have some additional features, so if you wanted to drag a window to the top of the screen or the left or right portions of the screen, you can do that, but I just like using the arrow shortcuts. They're a little bit easier. If I go to Launchpad, which I do still use, 
this is what it looks like. So I have the Apple folder, which has all of my stock Apple apps. Don't really use any of these. The, there's just not a lot in the Mac OS app store that I'm interested in. I don't really use calculator. I just use the spotlight shortcut for that. Contacts, I just use iCloud.com if I ever need to edit something or I just edit them on my device. I do still use dashboard though, mainly because of the iStat widget right here. So that allows me to view at a glance things like CPU usage, temperatures. You can see my processor is at 85 degrees Celsius, which is a bit much. And the fan's not really kicking up too high. Well, I can sort of hear it slowly turning back on, but yeah, you can see the RPMs slowly increasing. I guess this basic screen recording is too much for my MacBook Air, but I still use Dashboard and it's nice to see that it's still around in 10.12. Then we have Dictionary, FaceTime, iTunes, which I don't open anymore, Mail, which I haven't used in many months, Mission Control, Notes, Preview, Reminders, Safari, and Siri. Definitely have zero interest in Siri on my MacBook. I haven't really found any reason for me to use something like that. Then we have the other folder, which has the utilities that come with OS X. Then my in-dock folder has everything that I have in my dock in that one folder. Because you don't really need to have these laid out like they were like the rest of the icons because of the dock is already here so I have those also displayed here just stick everything in a folder and have it take up one spot on the grid instead of several the other apps that I have Photoshop CC 2015.5 audacity better use this uh, I don't remember what this stands for but this allows you to broadcast audio from your MacBook to some sort of streaming server such as um, icecast Next is Clean My Mac Deluge, which is my preferred Twitter, or excuse me, torrent client. Disk Inventory X, which allows you to visualize how much your, or sort of where your storage is being allocated. So you can view this information by data type, or excuse me, file type, file size, and so on. FileZilla is my preferred FTP client because it's free and multi platform iSnap I showed you earlier. I do have Google Earth Pro installed. I don't really use this too often, but it's kind of handy every once in a while. Handbrake for converting videos, which I mainly do on my desktop. Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, Remote Desktop, Silverlight, and Word. Push to Talk allows you to mute your microphone all the time. And then once you push a button down, it will actually pull in audio from your microphone, hence the Push to Talk name. Haven't used that in a while, but it's still nice to have occasionally. Next is Sling Player Desktop. I mainly use my phone for viewing my Sling Player or Sling Box. Next up is the Unarchiver, which allows you to open up various archive files. Next is VLC, which is my preferred media player. Next up is Wi-Fi Explorer, which lets you view the different Wi-Fi access points and networks in your available area. So this shows things like the router manufacturer, what type of technology it's using, like 802.11 AB, AC, and so on, and a number of other things. Next up is WinClone Pro, which lets you create an uh, image out of your Windows 10 or Bootcamp partitions. Lastly, I do have Yandex Disk. Now, everything that I just showed you inside of Launchpad is also what I have here in the Applications folder. You may notice that some of these stock applications, such as Photos and Maps, have been removed. I used Clean My Mac to remove those because it also removes some other related files for those apps. And I removed those because it frees up a little bit of space on my SSD. And I never use those apps, so I don't want them to be on my laptop anymore. So I just went ahead and removed those altogether. And I did the same thing for some of the utilities that come with OS X. So there are things like the, the Grapher application I never use that so why have it on here so that is it with my Mac OS tour for my 13 inch MacBook Air as far as the laptop itself goes it's still in great condition it works really well the battery lasts plenty long um, it gets a little bit hotter than I think it used to when it was new but nothing too uncomfortable but it still works really well and considering it's a little over four years since I've purchased it I think that I can continue using this for years to come. So that's it with my Mac OS 10.12 setup for my MacBook Air. If there are any questions that you would like me to try and answer, feel free to leave those down below in the comments area. But that's it with the video. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you all in the next video.